Hey y'all, I'm Carol Corey, your independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Welcome back to my creating corner. I'm so glad you've come to play again. And if this is your first time finding me, if you go ahead and click that subscribe button and hit the notification bell, you'll find out the next time I post a video and then you'll easily be able to come and play again. So today I'm all excited because the mail lady brought me my monthly box of happy, my paper pumpkin kit. And this month, February of 24, it's sweet springtime. So I think we're going to find lots of fun, maybe floral. I do like this box with all the little daisies all over it. So why don't I just get this down on the creating table and see what we have in here. I can't wait to look. Hang on. Here it is. Paper pumpkin. February 24. And it is sweet springtime. Let me take off the wrapper here. Oh, how cute is that? <laughs> That's adorable. Oh, golly. Now, paper pumpkin kits, you can actually prepay and just order just like one or three or six. And it makes a great gift for the crafter in your life. Everything they need to create adorable cards and about twice a year um, a sweet craft or goodie bags or something like that. Um, anyways, but you can prepay for just a limited number of months. You could prepay for a year and that way you get one free uh, box and you can just have an ongoing subscription like I do. And if there's something coming out or you're going to be on a vacation, you can even pause a month without any problem. And right now we are closing down. We're headed to February 28th, which is the end of celebration. But right now in celebration, if you go ahead and get um, prepay for a three month paper pumpkin subscription, either for yourself or as a gift, then you're entitled to one of the free celebration items. So if you don't have a U.S. demonstrator, I'm here for you, and I'll have all that information in the description box below, and where you can click and see what all you can get free. It makes your money go further, and all year long, we also have a fabulous online kits collection that changes every month. They add more to it, um, so all year. Any kit that is ordered from my site, all of the proceeds from the kit, I do save up. And in September, I do the Great Cycle Challenge, which is a fundraiser for the Children's Cancer Research Fund. So when you buy a kit from me, all of the proceeds go towards the Children's Cancer Research Fund. And I'll have some information about that in the description box below also. But right now, Let's see what's hiding behind this cute little bunny and that sweet little chick. Okay, so here we have our stamps. And it's a bunny rabbit. Let's turn it over. We've got a bunny rabbit and some daffodils. A sweet little chick. Welcome, baby. Oh, that's cute. Springtime greetings and happy Easter. Oh, these are sweet. These are sweet. Now, with your very first paper pumpkin kit, you, or with any of the online kit collection kits, you do get a block to put your um, stamps on because you know you have to mount your block your stamps on something. So these are some cute little stamps, and we also get a stampin' spot little ink um, pad every month. This month comes with the early espresso stampin' spot. Good. And underneath the tissue paper, which, by the way, I usually save the tissue paper for gift wrapping. Let's see what we have in here. Okay, I see some twine and some tear and tape and some embellishments, some dimensionals. Ah! Oh, how cute are these? Oh, how sweet. These are absolutely precious. I would love to make just all of these as is, but I bet we can come up with something cute as an alternate way to use these materials or something to do with the stamps. 
why don't we take a look and see what all comes in this kit before we think about how we're going to change up the directions. Okay, let me get it open. Everything you need to create these cards is included in this kit, except the scissors. You'll need the scissors to open the package, and this one comes with some twine, so you'll need scissors to cut the twine. That's all you're going to need the scissors for. It is everything included. Okay, so here we've got tear and tape for our adhesive. We've got some natural linen thread. We've got some cute white embellishments. And we've got dimensionals here. Oh, that is just so happy looking. I love this green. Such a cheery, such a cheery cardstock. Okay. Oh, is this a little box? Oh, it's going to make a little goodie box. How cute. Okay, one, two, three little boxes. So cute. So I'm guessing this is going to make nine of something. Okay. There's your die cuts. Perfect. And some envelopes. Oh, the envelopes have gingham on the inside. That is springtime for sure. And here's some, oh, that's cute. Look at that. That coordinates so nicely with these card bases. How happy. Isn't that just so sweet? And here are some more die cuts. Little chicks and some daffodils. And, of course, the bunny and chick like on the cover. Oh, and banners. Nice, nice. And most important of all, as you're probably wondering if you've never seen a um, paper pumpkin <laughs> kit before, how do you put it together? It comes with wonderful instructions. And on the very back, it tells you what is included. It's going to make six cards and three boxes. Um, it gives you the list of this coordinating Stampin' Up! colors in case you want to put your own spin on things and go rogue, which I love to do. Um, okay, so this would go with Berry Burst, Crumb Cake, Daffodil Delight, the Early Espresso, which comes with it, Garden Green, Granny Apple Green, which is that cute bright green, um, Pecan Pie, Petal Pink, and Very Vanilla. Okay, so inside the directions page, Look, it even gives you a measuring guide, an 18-inch long measuring guide along the bottom. When I say it has everything you need except the scissors, it has everything you need except the scissors. <laughs> and if you're not even, and also if you're not watching this video, there's a QR code there that you can hit with your phone and get a detailed directions on putting this kit together. But you're watching me, so. <laughs> Okay, so here are the directions. This is for card number one. This is for card number two. And then finally, the directions for the box. Okay, so let me go ahead and get things together. And I think I might go ahead and just use my full-size stamp pad and not worry about opening this one yet. So I'll have it mm, as a goodie bag gift or... As or to take on a trip or something. I'll be right back. Okay, let's start out with the what I think might be the quickest one, the box. So now the first thing that we want to do is, okay, well I took out the die cut from the sheet of the bunny rabbit and the chick. Now, according to the directions, we want to look at these score lines and we want to fold them in. And there's score lines here and score lines here. So, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and bend this score line up just to get things moving a little easier. Okay, we'll move these score lines. Now, for this one, we're going to push our finger in there and we're going to bend this down. There we go, and that bends it along the score line. And now we will bend along this score line. There we go. Or you could pull it down this way. 
There we are. So those score lines are bent. And now this one. Bend that in and that in. Okay, so our score lines are bent. And we're going to go ahead and poke out the little holes right here. And I'm sure these little holes are where we're going to thread our string. Let's get those pulled all the way through. And I am going to grab my tweezers. My tweezers are my extra set of fingers here. Makes my life so much easier. Okay. Get those pulled off. Alright. Now, we want to fold. Okay, it's showing we're not on the pattern side. We want to fold that. Okay. And we want to put some tear and tape on the bottom of these two long flaps. So I'll take my tear and tape. Oh, and when I opened up the dimensionals, there were also glue dots in there. So I'm going to take the tear and tape. Now it's called tear and tape because you tear it. So there's the end. So let me put a little piece here. And a little piece here. Okay, now we're going to fold this over, and I guess we'll form the box. Okay, so let's pull that one out there, 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 there. There, and there, and there, and there, that'll form the box. Alrighty. So I'm going to fold this side in right here. Oh, I missed the, the step where it says to put the tear and tape on the outer flap right here. And it's going to go on the outer flap, and I'll show you why. Why you want it there. That, like so. Now... When we push our small flaps in and fold it over and fold it over, these two small flaps will meet together here. We're going to bring this one down. We'll take the waxy bit off of the... Okay. Bring those over. Let it make the box that way. I didn't score the... Didn't those very well, did I? I'm going to bring that up, and there's the bottom of my box. Now, I'm going to bring this under. I'm going to pull this off. This is, you know, it's got like a waxy protection on it. I'm going to tuck it under, and... There we go, and now we're going to pull this one off. And there we go. And there, our bottom is completely done. Our box is formed, and we're going to fold the edges in because we had already gotten that taken care of. So it fold, so it'll ah, it'll tent in on both sides. Okay, okay. And now we need the string. And according to this, we want 18 inches. Well, the bottom of our paper pumpkin sheet is an 18 inch measuring guide. So let me take my linen thread, find the end, Eighteen inches. Snip. And now we'll feed the thread through from the back to the front, and of course, either side 
can be the back or front, but let's, ah. Through that side, and through this. This is so cute. Won't this be perfect for a little Easter treat? Oh my goodness. This will be so cute. Put a little Easter surprise in. Oh, how cute. Oh, look, and you just tie it shut, and there you've got this precious little gift box. And it could actually be for anything. It could be a birthday, or a thinking of you, or something. But now we have to put the decoration on it. So let me get my bunny rabbit. Now when you look at your decorations, sometimes it'll be a dark dot and sometimes it'll be an open dot. These are four dimensionals. So this is saying to put dimensionals on the back, which I will do right now. Got one behind a big bunny, one behind a chick, and one behind, at the behind, behind the behind. And we will center it right there. Oh, how cute! <laughs> That's adorable! That is adorable! Cute little gift box! That was quick, easy, and won't anybody be thrilled to get something like that? Yay! So let's see what's next. Okay, card number one uses the die cuts from this sheet and this white frame there's no die cut for the white frame ah but there is this sheet of die cuts for card number two has all of your die cuts within the white frame that you're going to use for this card so that's where I got this from okay so let's take a close look at our directions. Okay, on the very first panel, we are going to stamp in Early Espresso, Happy Easter. Now, in a perfect world, when you're using these clear stamps, also called photopolymer stamps, you're going to stamp on a stampin' pad. It gives a little bit crisper impression when you have something to um, go down on. It has a little bit of padding, a little bit of give. I don't always use a stamping pad to be absolutely honest with you, but when I do, I do see that it does give a nice impression. So if you notice I just tap, tap, tapped the ink pad. I didn't push and smush. So there we have Happy Easter, and I'm going to use my simple chamois to clean my stamp off. And let me go ahead and shut this because I don't need it again. Alrighty. Okay, now what do I do? Now, with glue dots, see the little dark circle? So with the glue dots, I'll be adhering the white frame with the grass, little grass poking up to the card base. Okay, here are my glue dots. I want to put one on each corner. We do sell um, mini glue dots and they come on a roll and I really like them. I think glue dots are so handy. Now before I adhere it, there are a couple little pieces right there i got to poke out. Let me poke those out. There we go. Just the attention to detail in these paper pumpkin kits. It's just beautiful. Just beautiful. So I will take off a little wax that's covering the adhesive. And you notice it's not going to go straight to the edge. You're going to have a little bit of the card front showing. Okay. 
So there we go. I think that might be about it. <laughs> How cute! They're cute. Okay. And now, according to the directions, now we're going to put dimensionals on the back of the banner and on the back of five daffodil heads. Okay. Again, I'm going to use my tweezers because I'm just kind of a fumble finger. And one, two, three. Ah, can't get it picked up. Four, and there is five. I love using dimensionals on my card. You know, give it that little 3D excitement. So now we're just going to take these daffodils and we are going to just put them over some card in spots. Okay, there's a good place for one. We'll go ahead and put that one. Ah. There. Yes, covering up one that's already got something printed on it. Oh, this one needs a daffodil. There we go. Get it over in front of the bunny's ear. Cute. It's popping out of the frame. Put this one here. And how about this one down here? There we go. Cute! And now for the Happy Easter banner. Look at how quick and easy this is. Oh my gosh, and it's so cute. Happy Easter. <laughs> I love it. Oh, that's adorable. That is so cute. And we have the coordinating envelope. How cute. Let's put that in its envelope. Oh, how sweet. I love it. I love it. Okay, well, let us not just sit here and admire this one for too long. Let's go ahead and finish up our last card. Our last card is a thin card. Look at that. Isn't that cute? And it comes with its own coordinating narrow envelope. Love it. So here on the pink banner, let me get this out of the way. On the pink banner, we're going to stamp in early espresso. Um, happy spring or springtime greetings. Okay. Let's get it that way. Let me find my stamping pad. Okay. Now notice, I'm not pushing and smushing, it's just tap, tap, tap. Okay? If you push and smush, then you might get ink on the block and you might end up with a boo boo on your um, cardstock. There we go. Springtime greetings. Spring is a lovely time to let people know you're thinking of them. Okay, so we're going to put it up this way. We're looking for the panel that has the chicks on it. And according to the directions, it's saying use dimensionals, one on each corner and one in the center. ahead and put them in the middle. Cute. And now, according to the directions, we're going to use six glue dots on our floral wreath. Three on the top and three on the bottom. Okay. 
get them behind the daffodils. Now you can use your fingernails to pull these off. You don't have to have um, tweezers. I just am so used to using tweezers. I've just always used tweezers and it just is so natural for me. But you see, it's easy to do without the tweezers. Okay. So we're going to get this wreath popped on here. Oh, how sweet. Oh, that's sweet. Those little chicks. And now we're going to put two dimensionals on the back of the banner. And again, you can use your fingers. You don't need to use tweezers. Oh, we're going to put these right across the bottom here. Oh, it's covering up the um, daffodils down here. That's fine. Okay. Springtime greetings. And this has the little white pearl embellishments. They're cute. Now these are self-adhesive on the back. Okay, so we've got a big one there and a little one. And oh, there's oh one, two, three, four, five on here. Okay. So here's one. And we want a little one there. And we want a little one there. And we want two more down here. Okay. There's one. And two. Cute! And that's all there is to it. Oh, how cute! Isn't that the sweetest? Oh, that'd be a sweet little welcome baby card, too. And it's got its own special sized narrow slim fit envelope. Oh, how precious. You know, as cute as these are, though, and yes, I'd be happy to do just these projects. I'm looking at these spring things, the chicks and the bunny rabbits, and I'm thinking, ah, I got some good ideas. Let's see what else we can do with the materials or with the stamps that come with this set. How about it? Let me get some things together and we'll be right back. Okay, here is card alternate number one. I'm excited about this. Now, we could do it very, very, very simple, or... I could show you a technique if you are a beginning stamper. This is something that you might want to learn to do. Now, usually we would do it using ink pads, but you may not have a lot of different color ink pads yet, but you can always get different color markers. These are the stamp and write markers, and I love these, and you can even refill them. Um, I have a video from a long time ago about different coloring options that Stampin' Up! offers, and I'll link that below so that you'll see how easy it is to refill these Stampin' Right markers. But what we're going to do is we're going to take, if you notice on the markers, you've got a skinny line and a thick line. The skinny line, it's the um, pen tip, and the thick line is the brush tip. We want the brush tip. So this is a block number, uh, is this E? Yes, this is block E. Um, you can do it with your, let me do it with a, okay, I'll do it with a um, block from a paper pumpkin kit. So you'll see you don't have to get an extra block. It's easier because you can do it in one step, but this is a little bit narrower. It's okay. So this is one of the blocks that you can get with your paper pumpkin kit. I'm going to take my fresh freesia and I'm just going to scribble on it. Now this is the part where you have to have something separate to spritz over because I've got my stampin' spritz and I'm just going to hit this with a little bit of water. 
and make it, you know, wet. It is best to do this, oh, look at that, I'm not, it is best to do this using um, watercolor paper, but that's not what I'm using right now. So, and then I'm just going to press it on there and press it on there. Let me dry this off. I need to add a little bit more. Find my cloth. Okay. So I'm going to add a... I wiped that. I'm giving it another little smoosh. And this is probably wet enough. There we go. Let me spritz it. Okay. Now I'm going to wipe this again. And I'm going to put Azure Afternoon on my block. And I'm going to, again, hold it over here and give it a good spritz, get it nice and wet and flowy. There we go. And I'm going to press that right below the my Azure, whoopsie, there we go. It's okay. There, and now let me wipe my block clean once again. And I'm going to do the same thing with the Granny Apple Green. Some Granny Apple Green on there. Hold it over my little tub lid. And I'm going to spritz it. I'm running out of water in my spritzer. Okay, it's wet and lovely, so I'm going to put it right down here, too. Okay, there we go. And just kind of dab up the extra, and that way it'll dry a little bit quicker. Now, we're going to set this aside to dry. Now, I have already done a card with the watercolor technique and there it is it's done now as I said this is going to be very simple stamping okay so I'm going to take my early espresso which if you remember that is the color ink that came in our paper pumpkin kit and I'm gonna tap 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 I'm gonna get up a stamping pad here and I'm just going to pop the bunny right here. So cute. And then I've got the chick. And I'm going to tap, 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 get the chick inked up. And I'm going to put that little chick right here. So sweet. So sweet. And... Now, this daffodil stamp that came with the paper pumpkin, what I'm going to do with this, yes, I could stamp it in the early espresso and then color it in, or I could color the, yeah, I'm going to do that. So I'm going to stamp this in the early espresso, and I'll just stamp that right there, and there we go. Now, find me the sentiment. Springtime greetings. Again, on the early espresso, and I tilted it, got it on the block. There we go. And I'm just going to put a little springtime greetings right there. And that is so cute, and that's all there is to it. Now, if you want to step that one up just a wee bit more, well, um, let me show you what we can do to make it a little bit fancier if you want. We can take some scrap white and I'm only going to do the bunny rabbit first. I'm going to stamp the bunny rabbit and I'm going to fussy cut out the bunny rabbit if you don't want them different colors. Now, when you're cutting out an image, you turn the paper, not your scissors. Yeah, you might wiggle your scissors a little bit, but it's basically the paper that you're turning. 
Doing whiskers is always kind of interesting to me. I'm trying to hurry for the sake of not wasting time. But this doesn't take anything extra. And you can, anybody can cut out a picture, right? So cute. Now I'm going to take one of the dimensionals from the paper pumpkin. Actually, I'll take two of the dimensionals. Take that off, that off. And let's put this bunny rabbit right over the image. There. Gets a little bit of dimension in there. And what we can do, if you want, you can always color in your daffodil, your stamped image because I know you have the markers because you did the watercolor background with them. So there you go. And you got to be careful when you're using your markers with regular water-based ink. You don't want to smear your inks. You don't want to go over And we can color in the chick if you want, but you don't have to. It's okay. When we were little, years and years ago, it would horrify people nowadays, when you bought your Easter shoes, you used to be able to get a little chick and they were dyed different colors. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so that is a very simple alternate you can do with the stamps from this set. And then this is adding a little technique, a watercolor technique, using some markers. Easy peasy, and isn't it cute? Now, if you want to take that a little bit further, you can grab your, um, oh, what did I do with them? I had them right here. You can grab your brushed brass butterflies. They are adhesive backed. And just add a little butterfly in the sky. Or you could put it down lower. But there you go. So that is alternate number one. A very easy, very cute little card using the materials from your paper pumpkin kit. And just a little bit extra. A couple of ink um, markers and the brushed bat brass butterfly but I've got some other ideas I can't wait to get to them so let me clean this up and we'll get to the next card okay I'm ready to get started with card number two now what I've done is I took my cloud punch and using some Stampin' Up um, it's this masking paper I cut out two clouds with my punch and I'm going to put them down here. There's one and oh, here's my other one. So I think I'll have this one coming off the cardstock. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take, put that under on some scrap paper. Now I'm going to take my, um, okay, I'm going to take my blending brushes. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some blue here. Oh, I forgot to say. I also cut a gentle curve in a piece of scrap paper, just freehanded it, and I'm going to hold this down here, and I think I want the curve going that way, okay? 
and I'm going to add some color. Now when you are sponging, if you, you know, you can use these um, blending brushes or you can get these packs of sponge daubers. It's a couple bucks and you get like five of them in the pack. I like the this because I can just control it a little bit better. So when you are sponging, you always start off of what you're working on so that you don't get a big old blob of color. And then you just come on it in circles. Okay. And of course it's okay that it's a little bit, you know, swirly looking because we get those high, high up cirrus clouds and sometimes you have some variation. So there we go. Good. And now I'm going to take my fresh freesia ink pad and I'm going to add a little bit of pink in there. It's maybe sunsetty, And of course I'm starting off you see how it starts out so dark? And then just round it in and come in across and just add some color there. Just a little bit of pink to the sky. It's okay. There we go. And I think I probably should put a little bit more blue down towards the bottom. A little light down there. There we go. There we go. Try to lighten up that swirl right there. Blend it in a little bit. Okay. Now that I've got the sky done, I'm going to turn my mask over and it's going to fit the um, shape I'm going to come just above the line where the sky hits the ground and in Granny Apple Green I'm going to add some color. Make sure I have my thing fitting it right. Of course, you know, when you're sponging or whatever, I like to make it a little bit darker at the um, edges. Let me turn it around so I can see what I'm doing. So y'all can see what I'm doing. There we go. And there's the grass. Hey! Isn't that cute? Now we just carefully pull our masking paper off. And we have a couple of happy clouds, happy fluffy clouds drifting by. Let me shut this, get this out of my way. These out of my way. Use those again. If you pull it off carefully enough, you'll be able to reuse these clouds on your next card. I like to make multiple cards of the same design while I have everything out and right there and I've got the mojo going. Just make several of the same design. Okay, ready to move on and see, ah, I tore that one a little bit. No bother, I've got plenty of masking paper left. Okay, now we're ready to really make some magic happen. Okay, so I already 
cut out my bunny rabbit and my chick. Aren't they so cute? There are some cute dies. This is called an add-on. Every so often, Stampin' Up! will come out with a little extra something that you can purchase that matches your paper pumpkin kits. Now this Love of Spring dies set had beautiful little has beautiful little dies and they matched the Jan you were able to use them with the January kit. Look, they're so cute. We've got greenery, daffodils. This says love and a nice um sentiment die. Okay. I'm going to use these two dies so it matches, so it coordinates with this February sw sweet springtime kit. And it's also going to coordinate with March's paper pumpkin kit. So, this little set of dies, you get four dies, and I really like that word window. Um, it's $12, $12, and it is in the online exclusives. and. I will have that order information down in my information below. Okay, so I'm going to take a scrap of Granny Apple Green, and that's a dirty scrap. Let me find a clean scrap of white. Oh, there's a piece of white. Here we go. And let me cut a piece here. Now, I think this is just the cutest thing ever. This is the Stampin' Up's mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. Isn't that so cute? And I love how it folds up for easy storage. And here we go. So with a scrap of Granny Apple Green and a scrap of white, I'm going to put the leaf on the green and the daffodil on the white. And we're going to put this here. My big stamp and cut and emboss machine. Um, this table is an old card table and it's a little too shaky. And I can't use the big machine on here, but my my daffodil moved, so I didn't go through all the way. So, there we go. Put her in the middle. Do not move. I need the entire flower cut. Do y'all ever use forks to make a, a bow? Okay. Put that aside. All right, I've already cut out some others, but let me go ahead and color them. So I've cut out several, actually. Stampin' Up! dies are fabulous. They've got these little holes on the back, these release holes, so you can stick something in there and it pushes it forward so you can easily remove the paper cut from the die itself. So let me put this these dies away. I am going to use that word window in just a minute. I'll leave that sitting right there. Now again, with my daffodil, I'm going to use the brush end with my daffodil um, marker. I'm just going to, let me get my scrap paper back, I did my sponging on, there we go, and now I'm just going to color the daffodil, the flower heads, I've probably got way too many cut out here, but that's okay. 
I don't have to use them all on this card. I can use them on another. And my granny apple green. Got all my flowers done. There we go. And I've got my card front here. Now let's see where I want everything. What did I do with my little chick? There she is. Okay. I like to get my placement for everything before I make it permanent. So here. Oh, we could put one right there. Okay. And no, I'm not going to use the greenery. Put that one down a little bit. I think that's cute. Okay. So using the glue dots, let's go ahead and put these on here. I'm going to have these down flat. I'm going to adhere these with the glue dots. Two should be enough. It's just a little piece of paper. I love the kits. The kits are so convenient. But I also love the fact that when you get a kit, you can use your own imagination. Yes, the kits have fabulous directions to follow, but you know, if you've got extra things around the house, and after a while, after you get a few kits, you're going to have lots of materials left over from the kits, and you can use them together. It just, I think it's a great way to, you know, Spend a rainy day. Okay. I, take the, I didn't take the backing off of that one. There we go. Stick down. I like to let the leaves be kind of loose where they can kind of move. I like to mention on my cards. And there I cut up all these the um, other leaf things and I ended up not using them. That's okay. Because card number three will be the perfect place for them. Okay. Put this one down. Okay. Now I'm going to take my dimensional. Oh! Oh, I know what to do. Okay, I'm going to take my dimensionals. Oh, I just had the best idea. <gasps> yes. Um, I'll do it on the next card. I'll do it on the next card. To the chick. Yeah. Cute. So this is our stepped up card. Mmm. I know what I'm going to do on the next one. Oh, that's going to be awesome. Okay. Okay, should I put some greenery in here, maybe? Hmm. I just think that might be a little too much. What do y'all think? Okay. I think that's good. Do I want to... Maybe I should put another check. No, I'm good. Okay, I'm going to make this an Easter card. No, we'll do this Hello Spring. I've got Easter here. What is this? Springtime Greetings. So now in Early Espresso again. Oh, wait a minute. 
yeah, I was going to cut this out. Let me find some scrap here. Stamp it on this. Cut this out. on a dimensional and I'll have it poking up. Let me do that real quick. I'll put that on a dimensional and I'm going to cut a sliver of dimensional and put it behind the stem. When you get your dimensionals do not throw out the edge pieces. Please do not throw out the edge pieces. They're awesome. They stick just like the round parts. There we go. I knew I wanted something in that little spot right there. There we go. Missed a piece of that. There we are. And I'm going to snip off the bottoms of these. So it'll fit in the card. Oh, that's getting really cute. That's really getting cute. Okay. Um, let's get everything put where it belongs so I don't lose my lose everything. Okay. Let me get my stamp and cut and emboss machine back up here. And get the plates back up. You have a base plate, a cutting plate, and then a top cutting plate. And there we go. There we go. had it for a while now. It's been out for a while and I still just love it. Okay. There we go. Springtime greetings. There we go. And something new that we have are these dragonfly and birds. Aren't they pretty? I used the brush brass butterflies on the first alternate we did. I'm going to use a, I'm going to use a bird on this one. Grab a bird. Um, I better do this first and then I'll figure out where to put the bird. Okay, I'm going to attach this with dimensionals, but I'm going to put some twine behind it. Okay. This is the twine that came in the kit. I'm going to take the little wax backing off of that center and then I'm going to hold the twine with my thumb and forefinger and then around my three fingers. One, two, three. And I'll cut it off. Now I'm going to push these together and Lay it across there. And kind of fiddle with it just a tad. Take these off. Let's see if I like that. Yes. Springtime greetings. There we go. Nice. Cute. Cute. Now, what do we want? Do we want a bird or do we want the butterfly? I want to go with the bird. Now we've got birds that are flying to the right and birds that are swooping down to the left. Let's use one of these that's swooping down to the left. Like it's coming down to say hi. Springtime greetings. It's coming down to say hi. 
So we'll just put it right there. And there we have it. Oh, I love it. I love it. I do. Oh, that's so cute. Of course, if you didn't have the um, dragonfly and birds, you could always use a couple of these. Shall we put a couple of these anyway? Nah, enough is enough. I think that's cute. I think that's lovely. So this is card alternate number two. So we had the watercolor background, and then we had stepping it up with some dimension to the card. And now, are you ready for card number three, alternate number three? Okay, here we go. I'll be right back. Okay, thanks for hanging in with me. Um, I am ready for our really dazzling card. <laughs> I don't know if dazzling's the right word. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that one. Um, don't want to get your hopes up too high, your expectations up too high, I should say. But this is going to be the card for the person who's done a lot of stamping and you've got some things around. Or, you know, for the person who's done a few cards at least. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these scalloped contour dies. Look how awesome these frames are. Okay, I've already taken the, the second of the largest frame and cut out my shape here on my gingham paper. Now, I have some gingham paper, so I used it. What you could do is instead, if you, if you don't have any gingham paper at home, See, we've got the one side small, the other side is larger. I think I'll use the larger side, actually. Okay. So I've already cut the center out with my scalloped contour die. Now, if you don't have any gingham paper at home, no problem. This envelope that comes with our slimline card, the card number two that we did, this envelope, the entire inside for this entire piece is gingham. And look it fits. You can actually use the inside of this envelope, which I'm choosing to leave it as an envelope since I've got the paper. So I'm not going to glue the paper down yet. You notice I've got a window here. I have some of our Fluid 100 watercolor paper. Okay, using, using, using the big block. This is block F. I'm going to do a watercolor technique on a panel. This panel of watercolor paper should fit behind my frame. Perfect. Okay, so I've got my panel here on my large block. Now we want to start with the lightest, you know, or start, start at the top and work to the bottom. I'm going to start with, where's my Granny Apple Green? I'm going to start with my darker blue and I'm just going to put some ink up here on the top of my big old block okay and then I'm going to take my polished pink and I'm going to add some ink right below it. There we go. Now some balmy blue. Get a little bit more blue down in there. Using the ink pads for the watercolor backgrounds is a little bit easier than is a little more vibrant, I should say, than using the markers. And now I'm going to do the bottom with Granny Apple Green. Okay? Now, once again, I'm going to hold it over. Oh, what did I do with my spritzer? Golly! Spritz it real well. Okay, 
it's nice and wet. And I've got my stamping pad here. And I'm going to cover it just to protect it. Okay? Now I'm going to put my watercolor paper down. And I'm just going to push. And it should be nice and colorful. There we go. Well, that blue right there didn't work too well, did it? So I'm going to get it again. <laughs> you can get it again if you want to. And we're just going to shake it around, get some of that stuff flowing nice. Um, I give it another spritz. I guess I didn't get as much water up in the corners as I thought I did. Okay, there we go. We're just going to let it run all over itself and look pretty. Mm. It's not spreading that much down there. There we go. Now it's flowy. Yay, I like that. And you can even think of that other as just some clouds up in the sky. Okay, now I'm gonna wipe my block off. Okay, and we're gonna set this aside to dry. Now if you need to speed things up a little bit you can use a heat gun and, and now with a cotton swab just got a little teeny teeny tiny bit of glue and I'm gonna put it on little bunny rabbit's tail and then we're just gonna put these paper shreds, the paper dust on his tail to give him a little cotton tail. <laughs> so cute, so cute. Here we go, he's got a little fuzzy tail now. Oh that's cute, okay. Okay, maybe I can pick a little bit more up. There we go. Cute. Shall we give the little chick a little bit of a, add some little down to his tummy right there? I've got some Daffodil Delight paper. And just like we did with the white, just going to scrape it. Now, Stampin' Up! cardstock is dyed all the way through. So when you do this, you easily get what you need. It's not, you know, it's all going to be yellow. You're not going to have white mixed in there. You know, I was making a card once and I ran out of white of all colors. And I had to get some white at a big box store because I had to get this card made. And so on the one card, I could see the two different papers, the Stampin' Up! and the Big Box Store paper. Let me tell you. Okay, hey, sorry. Um, camera was full. I had to take care of that. Not sure where I left off. I think I was talking about making a card that was half and half Stampin' Up! paper and half Big Box Store paper. And goodness, you could tell the difference in the quality of how it took the ink was absolutely fabulous. So, okay, I think I shredded enough of my Daffodil Delight paper and I'm going to take a little bit of this glue, it's still wet enough, and I'm just going to put a little bit on the chick's tummy. There we go, just a tad, just a little bit. And let's put some of this fluff on there. Give her a little tummy that you just want to feel and pet. There we go. There we go. Oh, that's cute. I like that. Maybe put a little bit more along here. Okay. That glue had sort of dried up. Okay. But, ah.
a little bit more fluff. Fluff for the chicken. Okay. There we go. Oh, that's so cute. That is so cute. Okay. We go. She's got that soft little tummy, and the bunny rabbit has a little fluffy tail. <laughs> Just made out of paper. Okay, let me get these out of the way and move along with the card. Okay, where am I? All right, let me go ahead and stamp a sentiment on here. Now, this is going to be a baby card. So, in our paper pumpkin kit, we got Welcome Baby. I'm going to go ahead and stamp that in Early Espresso on this piece of scrap white cardstock. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my double oval punch. I like this double oval punch. And I'm going to put the welcome baby in the smooth oval. There we go. And with a little piece of granny apple green, I'll put it down here. For the scalloped oval. There we go. And look, you can click shut and look how flat it goes. So easy for storage. Um, Stampin' Up thinks of everything. <laughs> All right, where's my simple chamois to clean off my stamps? There we go. Okay, now I'm just going to put a little bit of I could use the I could use this little um, glue dots but I'm just going to take the tear and tape that came in my paper pumpkin kit and put a little bit of tear and tape on the back of that and put this right down in the middle here how cute so sweet, so sweet. Okay, my watercolor is dry, so let me find a card base. And I'm going to, I'm just going to use some glue. It'll just go quicker that way. Or maybe not. <laughs> Let's find some glue that's not empty. Okay, that one is not a winner either. Okay. I'm not searching high and low. Go ahead, use the tear and tape that came with, with the kit, may as well. These are alternate ideas using materials from the kit. Okay. Now, let me just peel off. Peel off. And this one. And this one. Okay. We'll just put that right down in the middle. Well, let me make sure that's really where I want it. Ruby. Now, I'm going to use the bigger side. Or do I want the little side? Let me see how everything looks in here. And then I'll use the little side. Okay, so getting my 
tear and tape. I use whatever side ends up not having adhesive on it. How about that? Okay. Now. Okay, is that the direction I need it? Yeah. I'll have the sizes for everything down in the description box below this video, by the way. There we go. <laughs> so cute! Now, we want the chick, we want the bunny rabbit, Where do I want this? One, two. I don't know if I want to use that. I have to use that. Of course I want to use that. I'll put it in the background. One, two. Maybe that one there. Let's see how that's going to look. Put Mr. Bunny here. And little chick there. Yes. That'll be fine. Okay. Let me grab some glue dots. You see, I like to make sure of the composition before I make it permanent. Okay. So we're going to do that. And we're going to do this one. Closer to and now this one. This one was coming out of the frame a little bit. All right, now let's put some dimensionals behind the bunny and behind the chick. And we're going to be close to done. Let's put the little chick right there. He's so cute. Oops. Get Mr. Wabbit right up here. So sweet. Now we're going to put Hello Baby. Welcome, baby. Right there. Okay. I think a little bit of twine behind it would be cute. Just a little bit. Well, let me put this in the middle to form my thing. Okay. One, I'm just doing just two instead of three. Look. 
Welcome, baby. Oh, I know what I want to do. <laughs> Sometimes more is more. It's okay. I'm going to put a couple of these little flower embellishments around here. Put one there. And we'll put one here. You can put a lot on here. What the heck? I've got a whole thing of them. There. I think I need to break out my roll of... I've been using a lot of glue dots. <laughs> I think I need my roll of glue dots. Here we go. This is how you buy them from um, Stampin' Up. It's just this box of mini glue dots. So, here we go. And it's on a roll. And if you have um, like a die cut, you take your die cut and you could just put it on there. But I'm using my tweezers to put it on the card base itself. And we're just going to put lots of little flowers here because it's springtime and it's flowers and I think that's cute. We'll see if that's enough. There's one. Now these flowers are summer yellow, summer white. Cute little embellishments. Oh, I have to take the off. A little flower shower. Cute. Two more. <laughs> That's so cute little flowers around and we need something in the sky. Let's go ahead and put a little butterfly down here. Perfect. And if I can find, I think we need a um, bird here. What did I do with my birds? I just had them. Of the Okay, I guess when I cleaned up from that other card, I must have put it all the way away without thinking I would use it again for this one. Well, I'm going to find those, and I'm going to put it right there. It's okay. It's not something I have to have right this minute. Let me clean all this up. This has been such a fun, fun paper pumpkin kit to put together. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm really excited. So remember, the kit, we have this adorable little box that ties shut. And the kit, you'll make three of these. And then we have three of these cutie pie little cards with the coordinating envelopes. Happy Easter. We have three of the slim cards with springtime greetings and the coordinating envelope. And then, of course, we can always have fun with alternative ideas, using the products from the paper pumpkin kit, or even just the stamps once all the once you've made the cards and the box that comes with the kit. And so we've got a very simple springtime greetings, really cute little bit of a watercolor background there done with the markers. Absolutely adorable. 
Then we stepped it up a little bit with springtime greetings and we have some dimensional things here using the coordinating dies, um, the Love of Spring dies that coordinate with last month, this month, and next month's paper pumpkin kit. And then we have a cute little welcome baby card. And when I was cleaning up, I did find my birds. So I added a couple birds. And this is definitely a fancy card with the little fuzz on the chick's tummy and the little fuzzy bunny tail. So <laughs> if you do not have a U.S. demonstrator and you are in the United States, I'm here for you. You'll see my um, website right up above. I've got all the information for how to get to my store down below. If you have any questions, you can send me a message through my online store. And I just think these are so cute. And remember, this is still celebration. For every $50 you spend at the website, doesn't matter if it's clearance, it could be three months of prepaid paper pumpkin kits, you qualify for a free $50 item. And if you spend $100, then there's other things that you can get. You could get two $50, but then there are bigger things that you could get. And they're real stuff, like you know, 12 by 12 packs of designer series papers and dies. And I'll have the link to the celebration page down below also so you can take a look. But anyways, I love this kit. It's so cute and I do like the alternate the alternate ideas. I think that is adorable. I love the box. Ah, I could go on. Well anyways, thank you so much for joining me. If you didn't subscribe, please make sure to subscribe so you can come play again. And until next time, keep making the world a beautiful place. Bye!